All right. Looks like we have a transmission. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. This is your host, Joe Embriano, the Fullerton Informer, coming to you live from the busted up streets of woke and broke Fullerton, California. And here we go. I'm ha I happen to be driving uh, a different car today because my car is in the shop. This one's got better suspension. This this uh, this 29-year-old BMW has 15-inch wheels on it instead of 13 inch. Go ahead and get lost, dude. Stop tailgating me. Wait. All right. This one's got a little smoother ride for the potholes, folks. All right. I'm, I'm still without a phone holder. I haven't managed to find one that, that, that fits well on these windshields. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying the angles here. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? As we drive by one of the mind control facilities here in Fullerton that's ruining the minds of the young children, teaching them lies, right? So I just want to uh, let everybody know, wow, dump truck running red light. Interesting. I guess I'll lose if I try to go up against this guy. What a bunch of circus clowns at this hour, huh, folks? All right. So anyway, uh, my contact information is Joe Embriano, P.O. Box 4121, Fullerton, California, 92834. On the web at the FullertonInformer.com and WiFiDangers.com and 5GDangers.com and other sites, folks. Joe Embriano 777 at gmail.com. And without any further ado, let's just get right into the topics today. So I was uh, perusing the news feed this morning as I normally do. I don't watch television. I, I don't really spend much time in front of screens aside from, you know, a little bit here and there reading. But uh, there was a story this morning about this man in a school, an elementary school, who had got arrested for calling the school like 19 times and then calling the police department because his son had so much homework that he never got time to spend with his son, right? And uh, it's an elementary school and an elementary child and a single dad who was upset about the homework. Now, whether this guy was a drunk or he was loaded, I don't know. But folks, can I tell you what they're doing to children is criminal? And can I tell you what you're doing to your children is criminal? And I know they're supposed to be forced to get this indoctrination that they like to call an education. And I know that all of you are told how important it is. But let me tell you what it really is, folks. What it really is, is something designed, okay? It is something designed for your children so they, so they do not have childhood, so they grow up to be sociopathic, cold-blooded, heartless, mindless, unhappy, easily controllable consumers that are afraid of death, so they'll do what they're told as they fit into the place that this communist, Marxist, Darwinian, death education, psychotic existence of a society that's been erected around us can find a place for them to be used and abused and discarded once they're done being used by the controllers. There is no reason, ladies and gentlemen, that a young child, there is no reason that a young child should be forced to do all of this ridiculous garbage work, okay? They don't need it. You know, in my younger years, folks, I uh, spent a lot of time, uh, man, you know, really? Why don't you fix the potholes instead of pulling people over for crying out loud? Unbelievable. Predatory cops at nine o'clock in the morning. The roads are all busted up. There's holes and all the, and the police are out shaking down people going to work, you know? You know, it takes a special breed to be one of those, uh, one of those uh, Masonic agents of the corporation that roused people and shake them down. And I don't know, folks. But anyway, it's pretty sickening when, you know, the cops are hiding 
in these places when people are going to work to pay their taxes, uh, to pay for the salary of these, I, I don't know what you want to call these guys, but I've got names for them, but they can't be spoken on the air. And I think you know my position on law enforcement and, uh, you know, they're really not enforcing any laws. What they're doing is they're acting as agents uh, for the corporation uh, to take our money. They're not making the streets safer, folks, because if they were, they'd be on patrol, especially in Fullerton, by the way. You know, it, it's a common thing for the police to hide behind this church in the parking lot and watch porn on their cell phones instead of being out on patrol. OK, it's a, those are facts. But anyway, I digress. So, so what the schools have done to these children, uh, and I, I have to keep going into this because the curriculum is getting worse, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's getting worse by the day. Uh, it's it's all it's not arduous. It, it's not cumbersome. It's downright criminal. What is expected of young children and the yoke of bondage with that backpack. I remember many years ago, you'd see these children carrying these heavy backpacks. I never pushed school on my children. They got, they got through it with the minimum amount of uh, effort. By the time they got to seventh grade, they were pretty much on their own. And you know, the homeschool option was the option, but you know, they do know how to, they have to know how to read. They have to know how to write. They have to know how to balance a checkbook. But after that, they need to learn how to not be lied to and taken advantage of and uh, stolen from and uh, physically harmed. Because those are the things that you need to know how to do in life, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the things that are necessary. And those are the things that school doesn't teach you. As a matter of fact, school fills your head with so much crap, you can't think about how to do those things. As a matter of fact, it fills your head with so much crap, you can't even think because you're so worried about what you're going to get on your test and you're so worried about the Shakespeare uh, report you have to turn in or you're so worried about, you know, the germ theory lie term paper you got to turn in for your science teacher or you got to worry about these equations that you will never use again for the rest of your life, right? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, the AI's taken over so most of these students can cheat now and play video games. I don't encourage that, but I mean, I don't know what's worse, out of the frying pan or into the fire, right? At any rate, enough of that, right? You know, for those of you who have young children, uh, don't push them too hard. And there are ways out of this. You can homeschool them. And you can write your own high school diploma for these children if you need to, all right? You gotta realize that nobody asks for a high school diploma. Nobody asks for a high school diploma to get a job. Nobody asks for a high school diploma to go to college. You don't need a high school diploma to go to college. And that's if you even wanna go to college, okay? I don't know what the point of it would be unless you want to work for the controllers to hurt people because that's what these jobs basically consist of. If you want to go to college, uh, you can be a nurse. Uh, you know, you can learn how to hook people up to a propofol drip or, uh, you know, learn how to administer all these vaccines to people. Or you can become a doctor and always treat people as if they are uh, they have a chronic metabolic disorder of some pharmaceutical agent, right? In other words, medicine treats people as if they have some sort of nutritional deficiency of prescription drugs. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's insane. That's what you're pushing your child into, right? Oh, they, I want my uh, child to be an attorney. What? So he can break up marriages or uh, make sure people get prosecuted or uh, protect the drug companies that are harming people? I mean, really? I don't know. Is it, oh, I want my child to grow up to be a teacher. Why? So they can promote the lies and keep this uh, toxic train wreck on the tracks? Yeah, folks. It's pretty wild, isn't it? And that's why you yank them out of bed at six o'clock in the morning and force feed them a bunch of Uncrustables as they got their eyes half open as you drag them off to the prison induction complex. Named after some secular humanist uh, that's got his name on the wall because he died trying to brainwash your children. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the cognitive dissonance isn't gonna solve the problem. Uh, putting yourself in the fetal position, inserting your thumb in your mouth and curling up in your cozy blankie is not going to make the boogeyman go away. These problems are here to stay until you confront them head on. And, you know, how we confront them, whether collectively or individually, is your call. 
But I can tell you right now that there is no collectivism without individualism. And, you know, you people got to wake up and realize what's being done. You guys see and hear me? Okay, it's a little early for me. Sorry I didn't shave for the past couple days. But, you know, sometimes it's uh, better for a man to look like a man, right? Than, than uh, you know, one of these emasculated Tesla drivers that reads Shakespeare, right? Okay, well, I, I don't need to go into that tangent right now. So let's talk about Trump, shall we? Let's talk about Donald Trump. And let's talk about how uh, the deniers of Jesus Christ are setting up the chessboard for a civil war in this country, shall we, folks? Oh, did I mention that uh, uh, MGM Studios is coming out with a movie called Civil War, uh, where the military turns on the American people and starts killing Americans? That's right. They, they, you know, folks, if they can't take us over, they'll make us kill each other. And this will be the first time they've done this. All right. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Americans are not your enemy. They're being turned into your enemy by the mass mind controllers in the media. And those are the people that are your enemy, not your fellow Americans, folks. We are being taught to be victims and we are being fed divisive propaganda to make us hate each other so that we can do ourselves in so they don't have to get their hands dirty. Isn't that disgusting, folks? You know, I remember many years ago fishing at the pier down in Balboa, California, when I was a young man, and uh, I'd be at the end of the pier on the rail, you know, hanging, waiting for the, the, the fish to move in, the schools of fish to move in. And to my left, you know, there'd be 100 people, 200 people at the end of that pier at 5 o'clock in the morning. I remember I was 12, 13 years old, and there were people from Vietnam, the Philippines, Fiji, Tonga, El Salvador, Mexico, Guatemala, Peru, Brazil, Venezuela, Cuba. Yeah, there were some people from South Central. There were some people from Santa Ana. There were people like me from Garden Grove. There were people from everywhere out there. And you know what? Everybody got along just fine. You know why? Because we were there in peace getting along with each other, waiting for uh, waiting for the fish to start biting so we could bring some home and have dinner. And it was nice. Everybody got along. Everybody went to their respective neighborhoods and left each other alone. All right? Well, what's happening now is uh, we're being trained to hate each other and the government's uh, doing all these things through their social programs uh, to fan the flames of divisiveness, uh, to to further the fervor, if you will, uh, and to boil the pot so it, it seethes with tension. So at some point there can be a flashpoint like this fake, uh, this fake setup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, right? Like it matters who wins. We're still going to get the same loss, right? Both of these presidential candidates are criminals, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Donald Trump is a uh, Wall Street bankster whore. Uh, he's a real estate bankster whore. Uh, the guy's a fraud, folks, but he's very, very good at making you like him no matter how evil he is because he can make you laugh. Have you ever noticed how the television networks used to use laughter to make you accept things that were not good? Do you remember? That is the mechanism of how they get you acclimated to evil, folks. They make you laugh at it, right? And like I said many times before, uh, Donald Trump is probably the only president I know that could uh, sit there and tell you he's going to take your guns away and force you to take a vaccine and you'll still laugh at him and smile, right? He's one of the few people I think that I could ever remember getting away with that. I mean, the guy gave us a national ID card in for years. Yeah, that's right, folks. The federal driver's license, right? Do you remember for years there was this big, uh, you know, argument back and forth over the national ID card and what a big disgrace that was and how no supposed conservative elected official would ever support that. Yet Donald Trump rolled it out. Then he gave us Operation Warp Speed. He expanded the red flag laws to take your guns away. And of course, now, what do we have? He's building a wall to keep us in. That's right. 
He's building a wall to keep us in. All right. Problem, reaction, solution. Joe Biden opens up the, the borders and then Trump says, OK, let's seal them. And by the way, that's where you guys can't get out. Right. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, folks, except it doesn't make any sense unless you understand that everything that's being done is not supposed to make any sense. So, uh, you know, I heard some more crap about this microplastic stuff again. Here we go with the microplastic stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Now they're talking about banning uh, uh, sandwich bags. They're talking about banning plastic bags. You know, the ones you put your kid's lunch in, your child's lunch, your sandwich in. Folks, I'm, I'm going to switch gears real quick here. I want you to sit down for just a moment, and I want you to think about this for just a moment. I want you to imagine... A world without plastics. Think about that for just a minute. I want you to, the next time you're in the grocery store, the next time you're in your kitchen, the next time you're in your bathroom, the next time you're in your living room, the next time you're in your car, the next time you're at the hardware store, the next time you're anywhere, I want you to think about the ramifications of them taking away these uh, polymer plastics. And what would happen to all of these uh, either accoutrements or necessities if plastics were banned. Think about that for just a moment. I know there's stuff on the news that's really compelling and, and really, you know, that's got your attention, like these elections and the House of Representatives and, oh, who's going to control what and what is going to be red or blue or purple or green or yellow or what? Folks. The deniers of Jesus Christ print the money and they buy all the elections and they force feed you a false dichotomy so you think your vote matters. I hate to tell you it doesn't, folks. Okay? In the very beginning in this country was the ballot box. And when the ballot box doesn't work, then there's the soap box. And when the soap box stops working, then there's the cartridge box. Now, you tell me where we're at, okay? And I'll tell you <laughs> where you better think we are, all right? So, I mean, folks, you want to believe that uh, Donald Trump or Joe Biden is going to solve our problems. In fact, they're the ones, they're the architects of our problems, folks. I might as well, well, hang on for just a moment here. The United States is being destroyed by design, ladies and gentlemen. The United States is being folded into uh, hard communism, okay? Uh, you're going to hear about basic, uh, gu guaranteed basic income plans. You know, you've got socialized medicine. <clears throat> you've got all of these stack and pack housing uh, buildings going up. That's also, they're going to be, you know, look, the low income housing or the section eight or whatever you want to call it, government housing senior housing it is it has never been the government's job to take care of us but it's always been the job of a corrupt government to euthanize the masses because there's one thing governments do very effectively and that's genocide its own people and that has been proven throughout history uh it's a tried and tested fact that governments are very highly efficient killing machines and if you look at government policies throughout history the end result, the net effect, the desired outcome, the finished product of governmental control, interaction, and action is always genocide. And it comes in a variety of forms. It comes uh, in the form of engineered economic collapse. It comes in the form of engineered famine. It comes in the form of engineered wars. It comes in the form of engineered social unrest, anarchy, and chaos. It comes in the form of highly secretive, advanced technological developments hidden in plain view, disguised as something else, when in fact they are genocidal weapons, right? Case in point, look around at the infrastructure. You know... I should not have to wear ski goggles when I'm driving at night, ladies and gentlemen. I should not have to worry about going blind driving home from work at night. 
Last night I was coming home and the sun just started going down with the time change. And my goodness, I didn't have my ski goggles in this car because my other car is the mechanic. And it, it's unbelievable. Every single street light is an LED headlight, is an LED lamp. <clears throat> Every single car headlight is projector beam 5000 Kelvin, just literally in your face. And when they're kind of angled up, like if there's like a little rise in the road, uh, the oncoming cars approach, it just really gets you right. And it's amazing. Nobody seems to notice this as they drive around with their glasses on. You know, I've seen people fumble around. They, even with their glasses on, people can't see. Is it a natural thing to just accept going blind? Well, I guess it is, you know. And I guess while we're on the subject, you know, I know this individual who actually didn't even... Uh, didn't stop by promoting, you know, weaponized Wi-Fi in the schools. He actually went on to promote how uh, that the screens are just as effective for learning as paper and pencil and books. Can you believe that? So you've got uh, children and people looking at backlit screens from kindergarten all the way through their adult life. And what chance do you think they have... Uh, for a, a good outcome in terms of their uh, optic health, right? Their, their eyes are going to be shot. And, you know, uh, the, the worse your eyes are, the stupider you get. Did you know that? I hate to tell you that, but when you can't see, you can't see, folks. And when you can't see what's going on, you don't take it all in. And when your eyes are bad, you do not have the periphery of understanding that a normal person would. Not only that, when your eyes are covered with lenses... You don't take in the full spectrum of light that your body needs for optimal physical and psychological health. Did you know that? Did you know that, folks? And consequently, most people that wear these heavy lenses do not spend a lot of time outside. Now, uh, whether that's anecdotal or whether that's causation is, is up for interpretation. But the bottom line is the less time you spend in the sun, the stupider you will be. And the more time you spend in front of blue light screens and in under artificial light, the dumber you will become. And is that intentional, ladies and gentlemen? You better believe it is. You better believe it is, folks. Because everything they do, unbelievable, folks. Everything that is being done to us is by design and intentional to harm us. Why? Because the people in charge are psychotic, okay? You don't believe me. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to believe. You know, look at the movies. I keep saying this. Read the lyrics to the music that you used to listen to when you were dung and when you were young and dumb and full of you know what, right? Do you remember when you were a teenager and you, you knew all these lyrics and didn't even know? You'd sing along without even realizing what you were singing. I remember that. I knew the lyrics of all these songs, and I never thought twice about what I was singing and who it was really designed to sing praise to, right? That's because we're born spiritually dead, spiritually blind, and we need to be born again by the Spirit of God so we can enter the kingdom of heaven, right? And that comes through Jesus Christ. It doesn't come uh, through some... Uh, you know, some creep that, that, that wears a robe that, that says this or that or the other about you folks. It be, it, it's something personal that you've got to square away with God. and You've got to make an acceptance of a sacrifice that was made by his son. Otherwise, you're going to stay in your sin and blind and you're going to become a slave to your own devices. You won't have any power over them. And see, that's exactly where these people want you. Why do you think... You know, I, why, why do you think everything is what it is, folks? Because it's all designed to keep you weak and, in, and addicted to things so you can be controlled like a marionette on the strings, folks. I mean, think about it. You know, everywhere I go in the car, right? Let's see, liquor store, a donut shop, a dentist, massage parlor. So let's see, they got alcohol, they got cigarettes, they got candy bars, they got donuts to rot your teeth out. And then they got a place next door where they can go drill holes in your teeth and put mercury amalgams in your teeth. And, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, they got the place next door for your happy ending 
I mean, folks, why don't they have like these stores that sell these uh, these drills so you can reach the primary water and, 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 you know, tap the water and then, you know, grow food in your backyard and, you know, raise animals and and, and be self-sufficient. And, and instead of cramming everybody into these compact cities, uh, let people spread out over the land and tap the water and have their own, you know, aquaponics and can, they can raise fish and plants at the same time by tapping into the water under the ground because they don't want you being self-sufficient they want you under their thumb they want you in a stack and pack housing arrangement where there's a wi-fi router behind each wall coming uh, up from the guy on top of you the guy below you and the two people beside you i mean literally folks if you're in an apartment there are microwave beams coming at you from six directions in any room that you're in because you're in a cube and you've got you got it coming from everywhere folks okay you've got it coming from four corners and up and down it is unbelievable what's being done and they got these led lights in there making you go blind that disrupt your circadian rhythm you can't get sleep at night so you're up all night your health deteriorates you slowly but surely crumble under the effects of insomnia and premature aging, and then they get you with the malnutrition from the frozen food section, right? You folks listening to me? So what happened to this Boeing guy, right? What happened to this whistleblower guy? He supposedly uh, committed suicide in the parking lot right before he was gonna do his uh, deposition, right? So I guess this guy worked for Boeing for 30 years and made reference to all these alleged uh, you know, safety violations and the, the manufacturing of these, 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 these aircraft. And he had some uh, whistleblower lawsuit going. I don't know all the details. All I know is that the, uh, the FAA did some sort of an audit. And I think, you know, the Boeing Aircraft Corporation failed uh, a very large percentage of the audit very recently in terms of safety violations. So, you know, was this guy's, uh, was this guy's concern uh, warranted? Of course. I mean, got the door blowing out of that aircraft. Do you know that if that would have happened at a higher altitude, the whole entire cabin would have decompressed immediately. Everybody would have died in that plane, would have crashed and killed everybody on it. But because it happened at a lower altitude where there was still breathable air in the atmosphere, they survived and were able to bring the plane to the ground. There weren't any rivets in the thing. The door plug, because the airline chose to put seats there instead of create an emergency exit at that spot, uh, that's an aftermarket uh, option, by the way, that the airline chose so as they purchased the jet. They said, ah, screw it. Let's put a couple more seats there and make, make a few more bucks off of these knuckleheads, right? Oh, we forgot to put the bolts in, so the thing blew out. It's a good thing it didn't blow out at 30,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. Instead, it blew out at a very low altitude uh, at takeoff. That's why they were able to land and nobody died. But the point is, folks, is this guy's dead. He supposedly killed himself. Oh, it's a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Here we go again, right? And by the way, if anything ever happens to me, folks, <laughs> I have a wonderful family, a lovely wife, and a wonderful relationship with the Lord. I would never take my own life. I have never, ever, ever even considered it. So if something happens to me, folks, you know they killed me, all right? I was going to tell you that right now. And, you know... First, it is appointed once for a man to die and then the judgment. Folks, you know, if you're one of these hit men that'll knock somebody off for a thousand bucks, do you know what's going to happen to you when you die? Are you stupid? The love of money is the root of all evil, you know? And I know people with a lot of money that fall into all kinds of sick, sick, uh, twisted temptations and they ruin their life. So, you know, if you're living for money, you're a freaking idiot. But if you're very wealthy and you're very generous and you share the love, you're going to have the benefits and the blessings. Money's not a curse, folks. It's the love of it that's the curse. Just remember that, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, don't be afraid to die and don't be afraid to speak up and don't be afraid to do what's right because whether you got, you know, 10, 20, 50, 70, 80, 105 years on this plane, it doesn't matter. What matters is eternity and where we spend it. And I will tell you this, folks, there's a small amount of time we spend here. Live your life to the fullest, pursuing truth and righteousness and promoting the cause of Christ. Don't promote your own self-interest your entire life. Don't, you know, you live for yourself and your little clan 
the judgment will be upon you and your children, by the way. I know plenty of people who are sniveling, selfish cowards whose lives are train wrecks and they think they had it all figured out when in fact their life is a train wreck. All right? This, this Barnett guy, uh, I think he was murdered because, you know, folks, there is a plan uh, to destroy the American uh, infrastructure and industry. And it, there's no question in my mind uh, that it's out in the open. I mean, the economy is being blown out. Industries are being shipped overseas. The ones that are domestic and, uh, and, and persevering are being attacked. I mean, look at these aircraft, folks. I mean, the things are falling out of the sky or doing nosedives or the, you know, the, the, the doors or the windows are falling off the things. I mean, come on. Seriously? All right. We're here and there and just have a little discussion with everybody. And uh, it's coffee time, right? All right. I want to thank you all for tuning in. This has been another broadcast of the Fullerton Informer, P.O. Box 4121, Fullerton, California, 92834. Uh, this is your host, Joe Briano, coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ, coming to you in the name of truth, in a very corrupt, evil, sadistic world where we still ultimately have the victory, folks. And I do, I do want to thank you for your prayers and uh, your prayers your faithful promotion of this information. I'm sick of it. You should be too. If you're not upset about what's going on, you're mentally ill folks. And if you acquiesce to this evil, I will tell you something right now. If you are okay with what's going on, you deserve everything that's going to happen to you and your family. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Thanks for tuning in until we see each other again in Jesus name. Take care.